teaching blast. Technical seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Okay, um, the presentation, I think what I'm going to do is break it up into two sections. Uh, I'm going to give a, quite a lengthy demo in the middle of uh, just a really a tour of the test and lab manager tool. But from a high level, um, what we're interested in when we're talking about test planning is creating our test plans, um, planning the configuration matrix. And what I mean by that is what operating systems do you need to run your tests on? You know, what maybe versions of IE do you need to test against? What version of IIS? That sort of thing. We're going to take a look at creating the actual test cases. We're going to see something called shared steps, uh, which is uh, akin to the coder as uh, code reuse. We're going to take um, we're going to take a good look at that. We're also going to look at how you assign who will run what tests, and we're going to look at planning the, the setup that you need for your testing. And what, what that means is um, all of these things I talked about earlier with TFS and the, the uh, code repository, all those things are, are and can be tied tightly together. Um, and to be able to do that, you need to configure what data you want to collect as you're running through your tests and that sort of thing. We're going to also look at something called a test suite, which is really just a bucket for organizing um, different types of tests. It's very robust. You can almost think of these as uh, little window f Windows folders. And we're also going to see importing test suites from another test plan Next thing we're going to go over is we're going to actually look at running the tests, uh, setting up test machines. We we already mentioned that, but there's also the ability to kind of override the default um, data that you're collecting at any, any given point in time. We're going to look at running manual tests from a test plan, how how the tool can be used to speed up the manual testing. We're going to take a peek at running automated tests, uh, though we're not going to get into that too much. We're also going to go through the process of verifying a bug and, and take a look at some of the test results. And also just going to show you a quick, uh, quick and cool feature called exploratory testing. Uh, next thing we're going to do is um, take a look at the what the tool provides us as far as um, tracking, taking a look at what uh, user stories don't have test cases and what test cases have been run and, and how many tests are passing, how many tests are failing, and how you'd go about uh, prioritizing bugs and that sort of thing, assigning which builds you want your uh, test plan to run against, and um, also look at just some of the query capabilities of the tool. Okay, we're going to bounce over and uh, do some demo now. Um, what we're looking at now is the test and lab manager. Um, we've got along the top what Microsoft calls the center group. So we'd have a plan center group and a test center group, track, and organize. And I'd like to start in the uh, organized center group here and just go through all of these tabs kind of in sequence and show you what's going on. What, what we're going to find, too, throughout the uh, demonstration is that there's a lot of different places and a lot of different ways to do the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and create, create myself a test plan, um, and I'm going to create it in a state that's inactive because I'm just, uh, just starting now. It's not ready to be tested or anything like that. Um, we'll just... Call it something short, my alpha test plan. The area path and iteration, these are grouping mechanisms within uh, TFS, and I'm not going to go into them in, in too much too much detail. Uh, the fact of the matter is when it when it uh, comes time to 
implement TFS for yourself, what you're very likely going to want to do is create your, customize your own processes and that sort of thing. So these, what, what you're going to see in the area pass and what you're going to see in iteration is highly variable depending on your process. Okay. So now, um, I've created my test plan. Uh, we're going to take a look at what these test environments mean later, but this is where I'm going to go and, and uh, assign my test environment. And, and this is basically, or I'm sorry, test settings in this case. This is how I'm telling the tool what data to collect during a, a test run. And then um, I've mentioned a couple of times, we're not going to go into the lab center portion here, but this would be if you're using the lab manager, this is also where you could determine if you're using um, your local environment for the test run or virtual environments. I think I'm going to have to slow down a little bit. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of latency here. Okay, this is also where we'd go in and we'd set our um, what build definition we want to run against, and a build definition is basically what code is being compiled that I'm testing against. So if you have multiple applications, I would imagine you have multiple build definitions here. And then build qualities, I could say I'm only interested in uh, running tests against things that have already been lab tested or ready for deployment or ready for initial tests, that sort of thing. So I can specify both my build definition and build quality that I'm interested in using. The test environment, um, I'm sorry, what we were configuring over here was our manual runs. There's um, also, this is also where you're going to configure your automated runs. And since I don't have the lab manager uh, installed in virtual environments at my disposal, we're not going to be able to set that up. But this is the same place that, this is the place where you would go to set those settings. Uh, some other uh, high-level things you can do, um, again, this kind of gets into the, you can do many of the same things in a lot of different places, but you've got this little menu over here where you can uh, create bugs and share steps and test cases from here and even go in and write up a user story. And just uh, as an example, I mentioned work items earlier. This is the... Um, user story work item that comes with the Agile template off the shelf um, provided by Microsoft when you purchase TFS. So I can even come over here and create a, a user story from within my um, test plan manager. We've got a question about the uh, test environment values. And maybe I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's along the how do you set up these configurations, and we're going to get to that in a moment. So hopefully um, in the next tab here, we're going to answer that question. Otherwise, Phil, maybe you could uh, re-ask the question. I don't, I, I didn't quite follow what it was. Okay, so configuration variables. We've got, um, I've already set up a couple of different configuration variables where um, I've decided that my, valid, my operating systems that I may be testing against are uh, Vista, Windows 7, and XP, and the browsers that I'm interested in interested in running tests against uh, could be Firefox 3, IE7, IE8. Uh, maybe we want to uh, test against a certain version of SQL Server 2005, 2008. Um, I'll just quick create a, a new configural, uh, configuration variable here. Uh, let's say that that um, I I need to support both SQL Server and uh, even Oracle. So I set up a SQL database variable with the allowed values of SQL 2005 and Oracle. I'm going to save those now. What I can do is go in and and create a plan called plan called uh, let's say it's a Oracle. IE7 and uh, Vista. Okay, so so what I've done is I've said okay, I'm going to create a configuration uh, the 
using the operating system, browser, and SQL database configuration variables. And um, if I use this uh, checkbox by default, this configuration will be assigned to new test plans. This will uh, kind of come together when we get over into the uh, planning tab of things. So for right now, let's just um, accept that I can create these um, mysterious configurations, and we'll see how they're used later. Got another question here. I know of no limit. Um, I suspect it's really how much can your – oh, I, I'm sorry, of course. How many configurations can one test plan handle is the question. And um, I know of no limit, and it's probably more um, going to be based on your – capacity to test all of those things. In, in other words, if we're looking at um, this and we're doing a substantial amount of unit tests, you're really going to be probably limited in um, how many different configurations you want to try and support. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.